My name is Nathan Brandt. I'm with Cool Iron Works. Today we're taking a look at a 16 ton forging press to go over dye alignment and installation when you first receive your press, as well as maintenance for this slide assembly. When you're setting up your new forging press, one of the most important things that you're going to do is you need to ensure that the front of your dies are in line with the front of your die holders. That goes for top and bottom. With the press is a 5 16 Allen wrench. This is to allow you to install and remove your dies. Uh, this is your die. This part is the die itself. This is your die plate and the die tenon. This die tenon has a little machined groove in it that receives the set screw in your die holder. To make sure that they are aligned properly, you're going to make sure that this is in line with the front of the die holder. I'm applying upward force with my left hand as I tighten with my right. Now, this T handle is tightening the set screw, and the set screw has what's called a cut point on it. This cut point is actually going to seat itself into that die tenon and create a little fingernail depression that's going to hold everything really tight. With the provided T handle, you're going to get about 30 to 40 foot pounds of torque applied to that set screw. If you're getting movement in your top die, then it's time to apply more force than this will allow you. Whether you're going to use a, a larger uh, Allen wrench or uh, a torque wrench to really spec out. One thing that we really like to use is a torque wrench made into an Allen socket. Um, that allows you to really spec in how much torque. This is a 5 8 11 set screw, and it can take 110 foot-pounds. At its, at, that's its highest spec. Um, at that force, it's going to create a very large depression in your die tenon. And make sure that this top die absolutely does not move. This is even more critical with like a punching operation where you're going to be physically pulling on those die tenons as you're stripping the punch out of the, the bar that you're forging. So in this case, I've made sure that the front of my dies are aligned, top and bottom. I've torqued these by hand, and it, it, for most general forging sessions, 30 or 40 foot-pounds applied with this should be plenty. It's only if you're getting movement and need to apply more force that I would say go with another larger wrench to, to apply that torque. Another really common issue is making sure that there's no movement in this slide, forward to back or side to side. That's accomplished by checking the torque spec on these outer four socket head cap screws. On a 16 ton forging press, we've got a 9 16 socket head cap screw that's applying the clamp load of this bronze to this steel slide plate. That's what makes sure everything's very rigid and fixed as it moves up and down its stroke. If you're starting to get loose bolts or wear worn into these guides, you'll notice things get a little looser. Now you can overcome that by checking the torque. You want a minimum of 80 foot-pounds being applied to these four outer screws and up to about 110 foot-pounds of force. That makes sure that this is clamped tightly, but you're not going to go to the 110 right away. The tolerance that's built into these, you're going to need to leave yourself a little room so that you're not actually clamping the bronze to this so tightly that you can't even move the slide at all. If that does happen while you're torquing these, make sure to just let them all out a little bit, relieve that, and then start again getting to 80 and working your way up if you're trying to take in any additional wear. So I've gone ahead and removed the bolts attaching this bronze l -jib. As you can see, we've got our steel slide plate. This is your slide plate that extends all along the front of that frame and that is welded in place. And then we've got a bronze l -jib a center jib, and another L jib on the other side. If I go ahead and face off a few thousandths, when I reattach this, that's going to take up any slot between this back of the L jib and the slide and tighten that back up. So as the machine wears, you want the bronze to wear rather than that steel. And so you can reface this a lot before you'll need to replace this whole piece of bronze. Now, I'm going to show you the proper torquing of the bolts as I reinstall this Elgin. Now, before I'm going to go in and tighten everything, I'm going to torque this in a X pattern going from corner to bottom corner, top corner to bottom corner. That's just another way to make sure that everything's being clamped evenly. And you know, another really important fact here is as I'm tightening these bolts, 
kind of inspecting this whole bronze assembly and making sure that I'm not seeing any gaps, which would indicate something like a bird or uh, debris has gotten in there. And as it's clamping, it's ending up clamped off uh, the flap, which could cause some funky spacing to occur. see how everything's going. If I need to take any additional slop up, I can always apply more torque, but I'm gonna visually inspect the machine, run it up and down a few times and see how everything's working. We're going to make sure that we've got our spacing behind the top die. The dies have been aligned and tightened already, and I'm going to turn the machine on and run it up and down. I'm just inspecting, making sure everything's nice and tight to work properly. This is an excellent opportunity to apply a little bit of weight lube to the machine as it's running initially and really breaking in the bronze. These uh, bronze wear plates are kind of going to wear in to any irregularities in the steel plate, making a really nice tight fit. sell. Um, really a, a good quality way lube like you can buy for a milling machine or something similar is an excellent option. Um, there are many available, even something as, uh, you know, like a, a gear lube, something that's going to uh, really have a tackifier that's going to stick to this slide plate. Otherwise, if you're just applying general machine oil, you're going to get a lot of the oil over time running down and kind of making a mess. It's also an invitation then for debris and things like that to get stuck to the slide. That's why we don't recommend using a grease because it attracts debris, which when you're forging, you're going to be creating a lot of metal dust, scale, things like that. And uh, you don't want to really draw that into the bronze slide. sides and, and back of the slide assembly. I'm going to run the machine up and down a few times just to make sure that that's all pushed throughout the slide and keep everything nice and slippery. Now, a really important note about what we just did. If you have an older model machine from us, so pre-2020, um, you're gonna wanna check to make sure you don't have a graphite impregnated bronze slide. Now the graphite impregnated bronze does not need lubrication for the life of the wear components. The reason that we've moved over to a solid aluminum bronze wear plate is just because there's a tendency for this slide to over time rust and get some surface imperfections because there's no need for that lubrication. Um, by applying the lube, it just makes everything clean, it keeps the bronze well lubricated, and kind of adds to the rhythm of maintaining the forging press. Now that we've got our dies aligned, we've got our slide lubricated, and our bolts all torqued to spec, it's time to do some forging. 